Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be exploring an interesting graph theory problem. Suppose we have a lattice of points and on it we draw this n by n square like so. And the top left vertex is A and the bottom right vertex is B. And we want to travel from A to B but we can only travel along these edges like so. What we want to ask ourselves is what is the maximum path length from A to B so that we remain within this square. So uh, we want to travel from A to B and we're going to have some path across the edges and we want to know what is the maximum path length. And now of course we're going to insist that we cannot repeat an edge because of course if we could repeat edges we can make our path arbitrarily long by just you know repeating this edge say infinitely many or not infinitely many times as many times as we wanted and then we could continue down to B. So we're not allowed to repeat an edge and we want to know what is the longest path length from A to B. Okay, so if you're going to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. And I'm going to jump straight into a solution. Okay, so before we start considering paths of longest length, let's do the simple problem and ask about paths of shortest length. So if you want to travel from A to B and use the shortest path possible, well, how do we go about working out what that length is? Well, I claim, and hopefully it's quite clear, that the answer is just 2n. And the way that we can prove that is firstly note that any path from A to B must be of length at least 2n. And we know that because we know we've got to go n units in the right direction and n units in the down direction. So that already constitutes 2n towards the length of the path. And then that we know that the path of shortest length is exactly 2n just by finding a path that attains that bound. So a very simple path is just go across and then go down. So that obviously is a path that has length 2n, and that, that kind of solves the problem for the path of shortest length. To do the path of longest length, we're going to follow a similar sort of algorithm in the sense that we're going to bound it. So we're going to find some number such that any path uh, from A to B must be beneath this sort of uh, upper bound. And then we're going to show that there is a path that attains that upper bound. Let's move on to that. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is count the number of edges in this graph. Now if we kind of look at this first row of edges here, well we've got one, two, three, but that's in the particular case that I've drawn, in the more general case it would be n edges um, kind of in this top row, and then well, how many rows do we have? Well we have one, two, three, four in this particular case, but in the general case that would be n plus one. So it, how many horizontal edges do we have? Well we have n lots of n plus one, or n plus one lots of n, so that's n times n plus one, uh, horizontal edges, but then of course we've got by symmetry the same number of vertical edges. So multiply this number by two and this will give us the total edges, total number of edges is equal to that guy there. So in a sense this is already an upper bound for the sort of maximal path length. Any path from A to B, because we can't repeat an edge, must have at most that many edges because those are the edges it's kind of choosing its path out of or that, that many edges. But that upper bound is too high, it's too loose, it's not good enough to solve the problem. What we need to do is kind of have a little play with this and notice something about the degrees of certain vertices and notice or use perhaps a little bit of our knowledge in graph theory to perhaps make this upper bound a bit tighter. And what do I mean by that? Well, we know that because we're not allowed to repeat an edge and we have to go from A to B, vertices with odd degree are going to be a bit of an issue because, well, let's look at the vertices of odd degree. We'll notice all these kind of middle vertices, all the ones in the interior of the square, they all have degree four, so they're not, um, that's not That's not an odd number, it's an even number. And if we look at the corner ones, they all have degree two. The only ones that have an odd degree are these kind of middle edge squares, uh, middle edge vertices. So this guy here, 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 and these three as well. Why is this an issue, I say? Well, because we know we're not allowed to repeat an edge. So if, say, our path comes in like that, and then, say, comes out like that, then all of a sudden, we're now no longer allowed to use this edge here. Because if we try and perhaps come down here and then back up here, we have no escape. We cannot come back out again because we're not allowed to repeat an edge and we've used all three edges adjacent to it and then our path will kind of be stuck. So what that means is for each of these vertices here, like so, we can only use at most two of the edges adjacent to it. Um, so for example, this vertex here, we can only use at most two in our path. Of course, perhaps we could use zero, and technically we can't use one because if we tried using one, we'd come in, and then if we just use one, we wouldn't be able to leave. So we'd either use two or zero on these um, middle side vertices. I'm not sure what to call them, but yeah, we use at most two. But notice that the edge that's kind of missing, 
So if suppose we use two uh, edges for each of these vertices, the edge that's missing could be shared. So for example, these two vertices here, they could share that missing edge, and those sort of this edge and this edge can be part of the path, and this edge and this edge can be part of the path. So the kind of total number of edges missing, so edges missing from our path, we're going to sort of uh, find a lower bound for it. Well, the edges missing must be the total number of these kind of middle side vertices divided by 2. Well, how many middle side vertices are there? Well, on this edge here, well, we've got 2. But that, in a more general case, would be n minus 2 because we've got n, sorry, n minus 1. I apologise, n minus 1. And the reason for that is because Lord, we've got n plus 1 vertices here, but then we're subtracting off the two corner vertices, so that gives us n minus 1. But then, of course, we've got four of these sides to the square, so we multiply this number by four. And then, as I said, we divide by two because two vertices could share the edge that's missing. So the total number of edges missing must be at least that number there. But another thing to notice is that if we look at the vertex, this corner vertex here, remember we're considering paths from A to B. So that means um, once we kind of hit B, we're not leaving B again. So if, once we come into B, we can either come into B from this vertex here or this vertex here. You know, suppose it's this vertex here we come into B in our path. And that means this edge here is also missing. We're not going to use that edge. So in fact, we can actually add one to this guy here because we know that edge is missing. Or obviously the other case is if we come in to B from here, then this edge here would be missing from our path. So we have the total number of edges is 2n n plus 1. And we know that the number of edges missing in our path must be at least this guy here. So doing this number minus that number there will give, an, give us an upper bound to the number of edges in our path. Anyway, let me clean up the whiteboard and we'll continue. Okay, so our total number of edges t is 2n times n plus 1 and the number of missing edges from any path must be at least 2n minus 1 plus 1. And before I had 4n minus 1 over 2, but I've just simplified that down to a 2. Anyway, so this means we can work out the sort of potential edges in our path Okay, perhaps P isn't the best notation because P usually stands for path. Anyway, I'm going to do this number here minus this number here. So this number here is 2n squared plus 2n, then minus 2n minus 2 plus 1, like so. Well, minus 2 plus 1 is just minus 1. Okay, and then the 2n and the 2n there will cancel, and the minus minus gives me 2n squared plus 1. So that means that any path from A to B, which doesn't repeat an edge, must have at most... 2n squared plus 1 edges. And now here's a really, really neat trick, and perhaps, you know, if you've seen problems like this before, you might have already spotted this, but an observation is that going from A to B, any path length must be even. Okay, so if we try and get from A to B, um, any path we take, if we work out the length of it, it must be an even number. And the reason, for, or one way of sort of thinking about it is if we kind of colour these vertices, if I colour this one black and then leave this one here white, so just a circle, this one black, oh sorry, this one black, then this one white, kind of like a chessboard and so on, so this would be white, this would be black, this would be white, this would be black, this would be black, this would be white, black, and then white, and then white, black, and white. Anyway, they have the same colour, so A and B have the same colour vertex, and if you just, you know, think about it, going from, say, any black vertex to any black vertex, you're going to have to move an even number of edges because any, any edge goes from a one colour vertex to another colour vertex. So black to white or white to black. You don't have any edges which are black to black or white to white. So that means you must, going from black to black, you must go black, white, black, white, black, white, you know, however many times it is, and kind of alternating. So every time you're adding two to the path length, so going from A to B, certainly the path length will be even. But notice 2n squared plus 1, no matter what n is, this is always going to be an odd number. So in fact, we can make this upper bound slightly tighter by noticing that our path length can never be an odd number. So we can go down to the next biggest even number. And thus, we can actually get that p, our potential path length, is at most 2n squared. Okay, so we found an upper bound for 2n squared, or I claim that this is kind of like our final upper bound for p that p is at most 2n squared. And now, like I said, with this kind of uh, shortest path length case, we've found a bound, and now what we want to do is show that we can always find a path that attains this bound. So I claim that there is a path from a to b which has length 2n squared. Let me clean up the whiteboard and I'll prove that. Okay, so to show that we can always find a path of length 2n squared, I'm just going to use the example n equals 3 and kind of prove that it works for n equals 3. It's very clear to see why it works then for higher n or other n as well. 
Okay, so our path is going to be kind of the intuitive path. If I told you to try and draw a path from A to B, which uh, sort of has maximal path length, you'd probably try and zigzag a bit and try and use all the edges you can, because kind of as you move towards B, it's going to be difficult to kind of uh, reuse edges that you used earlier on. So you're going to try and use all the edges and kind of swoop in on B. So what we're going to do is start off here at A, and we're going to go across, we're going to go down, we're going to go across, we're going to go down, we're going to go across, we're going to go down, and then we're going to go across, and then up, then across, then up, and then across, and then up, and then across, then down, then across, then down, and across, then down. And you can check, perhaps drawing it on, uh, black on black is a bit difficult to see, but you can check that none of the edges have kind of repeated or anything like that. Okay, and I claim that this path has length 2n squared, and how can we prove that? Well, let's have a look at the horizontal, if we kind of look at this first column of boxes, if we look at the horizontal edges, how many have we got? We've got 1 here, 2 here, and 3 here, and obviously this is a case n equals 3, but in general that would be n horizontal edges in this block of, um, sort of this column of blocks here. And how many vertical edges do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, and that again is n in the more general case. So the number of edges we have in this first co column is 2n. But the exact same thing holds in this column of uh, blocks. We have 2n, and this column as well, 2n. And of course, how many columns do you have? Well, we have n of them. So in t the total number of edges then is 2n times n, which of course is 2n squared. So we found a path which has length 2n squared, and before we showed that any path must have length at most 2n squared, and that solves our problem. We've shown that the maximal path length from A to B is 2n squared. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.